All right, uh, let's get started. A um, couple things. So you all know that homework uh, six, I have that titled as T-beams and doubly reinforced beams. That is wrong. I'm a victim of copying and pasting. But it does say March. It doesn't say February. So I got that fixed. Okay, so uh, homework six, designing for shear. It's going to be due on Friday, March 16th. Y'all are going to turn that in on the cart because we're going to, as of now, we're going to cancel lecture on Friday, March 16th. It's the day before spring break. Uh, and plus, we're actually making pretty good headway. Um, uh, we, we've got a fair amount of time to investigate shear. Uh, and that's really what we're, that's our main focus between now and the end of spring break. Honestly, after lecture today, um, you all will be able to tackle most of what's going on in the homework assignment. Uh, you should be able to get started. There's a couple things I'll point out after lecture today that might, um, that might illuminate some things, but we'll, we'll get to that here in a second. Um, the only other thing I thought I would mention, if anybody's interested, Triad Engineering, they're looking for a bunch of interns, triadeng.com. Um, yeah, I'd apply as soon as you can if you're interested. All right, um, so today we're just going to keep on trucking with shear. If you recall last time, we, we started example 13, but we didn't come anywhere close to finishing it, but I thought it was important to take some time on the shear diagram construction because it, once you understand that, the process, I think, will, will, will make a lot more sense. So let me, let me go back to the notes. Um, so if you recall, you know, up until now, we've been discussing the concept of, uh, of, of shear and how do steel beams, or steel beams, how do concrete beams resist shear? And that's through the, the capacity of the concrete itself and the capacity provided by stirrups. So what we're trying to do uh, is lay out those stirrups. You know, if you think about this from a design procedure, I mean, if you've got a beam that you're designing in some floor system somewhere, you all know by now that you can size that beam based off its moment capacity. I mean, we did homeworks, examples, exams galore about that. You know, here's a beam this long, so you have this much load, design the beam. You all know how to do that. You all know how to size that beam. But you're sizing it solely based off its moment capacity. For shear capacity, you've got to throw some stirrups in. So that's what we're focusing on uh, in this procedure is how to lay out those stirrups. So the first thing you have to do is you have to construct your shear diagram. And that is what we focused on last time was how to actually construct that shear diagram. Everybody in here should know how to draw a basic shear diagram. But what I mean by, that, by constructing the shear diagram is not just drawing it, but uh, laying out the regions of interest, the regions where we absolutely have to have stirrups for capacity, the region where the concrete carries the shear, so we really should just be using uh, S max, although we might be able to use S max in some of these, uh, these other regions. But then also section three, where we shouldn't really be using uh, stirrups at all because the concrete can carry it uh, by itself. Um, that's sort of where we stopped last time, but, um, but I'll, I'll sort of, I'll, I'll, we're sort of, what we're going to do today is take that and move on. So what we're going to be doing today, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate an S value to begin the design. I mean, it, you know, when we're laying out stirrups, really what we need to know is how far apart to space them, okay? So we're going to start off determining our, our first S value, and we're going to determine that based off the shear of VU star. Remember, that's the factored shear at x equals d. That's where we're going to start our design. Um, we'll be able to improve upon that design by using S max. Uh, we might be able to use some uh, spacings in between those two values, and that, that'll be something we discuss near the end of the example. Um, but the idea is S value, determine where on the, uh, along the beam can we begin to use such S value, and then begin to lay out uh, the design. Um, Let's see, uh, a couple things. When we start laying out stirrups, it's quite typical to put your first stirrup uh, at half your, your, your stirrup spacing. So let's say you do the math and you find that you need stirrups spaced at six inches. Usually you'll start your stirrup spacing, put one stirrup at let's say three inches, and then start uh, uh, spacing that out uh, across the span. That's, that's just a, a, an industry standard. Uh, and, and something that, that we'll employ in this class to make our lives a little easier for, uh, for spacing purposes. We can add additional increments of stirrups throughout the span. That's something we'll look at uh, near the end of the example. When it's all said and done, you need to evaluate uh, this limit. You need to do this, but usually that, that shouldn't be uh, too big of a deal. 
Um, and this was the example we were looking at. We, um, we took this example. We already did a lot of uh, fundamental computations with it. Let me go ahead and pull, the, uh, pull this up. So, you know, we laid out our, our fundamental properties. Um, I, I do want to take a, a second and make sure that everybody understood what we did here. I mean, it, this, was, this was last semester stuff, to be honest. This was just taking the beam and constructing the shear diagram, you know, recognizing what the support reactions are, cutting a section, so on and so forth. You can do it this way, or you can, you can use the formulas that are present uh, in the design aid I gave you at the beginning of the semester. I, I don't have any problem with, with either one that you use. You just need to be aware that you're using them correctly. And if you ever have any doubts about using that design aid, always revert back to this. I know everybody in here can do this stuff because we, we all did it together uh, last semester. But when it was all said and done, we got two equations uh, of import. The first one tells us what is the shear at some distance x. And then the second one is if I've got some shear value, where does that occur on the beam? Okay. So is everybody okay with that? Okay, so the next thing that we did is we computed our, uh, we started looking at the concrete. We said, okay, let's, let's compute our concrete shear capacity. Remember when you plug and chug, you put in PSI, you get out PSI. So when you do the math, just plugging the values into the equation, it comes out in pounds. So it's like 50,596 pounds. Um, so make sure you convert that to kips. Uh, while we were at it, we computed FVC and half of FVC. Okay. We did we really needed three important values for our plot. We needed VU star, that's our, uh, our first shear value, that's the shear at x equals d. We needed, and we also needed two x values. We needed where does VVC occur along the span and where does half of VVC occur along the span. And we used those values to generate this. And this is where lecture stopped last time, so I just want to take a second and make sure everybody is okay with this image. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the shear diagram. I mean, you all have drawn shear diagrams before. If you got a beam with a uniform distributed load, you know, go up, the distributed load sets, your shear diagram goes down like that, and then the other reaction brings it back up. I'm only plotting the shear diagram for half the beam, so I'm plotting from the, let's say, the left support up until mid-span because the loading and the geometry is symmetric. So whatever design I generate from here to mid-span, just mirror it over, and that's the same design over here. Now that begs the question, well, what if the loading isn't symmetric? What if the uh, geometry isn't symmetric? Do I need to design across the whole span? The answer is yes, you do, okay? Um, we'll, we'll try, for our purposes uh, in this course, to try and uh, accommodate and use symmetric geometries and loadings as much as possible because once you understand how to do it once, doing it again is just more work. It's not really, you know, more rigorous. Yes? Yes. What dotted line? This right here? This dotted line right here. Okay, all right, that's a good question. So what's the purpose of this dotted line up here up top? Okay, so let's be clear. When you actually draw the shear diagram, like imagine concrete design doesn't exist and you're just doing this from structural analysis. You would jump up and then go down. So you would actually, when you're drawing your shear diagram, jump up to 115, okay? So I'm drawing this here just to show you that if you were to actually construct this using structural analysis, this is what you would get. It's dotted because we're not using that for design purposes. We're only using this value for design purposes, the 91.04. So I wanted it there so you would see where that's coming from. Now, how, how am I constructing this dotted line? It's just, you know, all this is at the same slope. So imagine this at the same slope, just drawn up, and you get 115. Does that make sense? What's that? Well, I mean, okay, I, I, had, I had discussed that last time, but if you remember, ACI allows you to perform an end reduction where you can start your shears at X equals D. So, is everybody okay with that? All right. Um, now, let me be clear. We're in no way, shape, or form done with the example here. All, all we've got is just a shear diagram. We haven't designed anything. Okay, but we need this shear diagram present to understand what's going on. Now, I'll say this, for uniformly distributed loads, like once you've done one, 
you can do another one quite easily. But there are some instances where, for instance, if you've got concentrated loads, actually having a graphical representation of the shear diagram will be a lifesaver. Because there can be some times, and we'll see this in the next example, where if you were to just blindly use the equations, you would get distances and values that don't make any sense. And that's because of the presence of concentrated loads. And, and I'm, I'm sure right now you're probably like, what are you talking about? Well, when we get to the next example, I think that will become very, very clear. So for now, just sort of, just, just trust me on that. Um, but is everybody okay with this so far? Now, the big takeaway for our purposes right now is this. When we start laying out stirrups, and, and just to keep this general, okay, we are going to place stirrups from x equals 0 to x equals 100.2 inches, okay? And if there's any one number right now I want you to keep in the back of your head, it's 100.2, okay? I want you to just keep that number in the back of your head. Now, first off, why am I placing stirrups from x equals 0 to x equals 100.2? Well, I obviously need stirrups at x equals 0. I mean, you know, here's the x-axis at x equals 0. That's where my shears are highest. So I obviously need, need stirrups there. Why am I stopping at 100.2? Well, I keep going over, keep going over, keep going over. Once I hit 100.2, what's the shear value? It's half a PVC. Any time that the shear is less than half a PVC, we do not need stirrups. We really don't need stirrups any time that the shear is less than this. But ACI says, I don't care if the concrete can carry the shear by itself here. If the beam were to fail in shear and there are no stirrups, it fails quite suddenly. So as a measure of safety, ACI says, you still got to provide stirrups in this region. But anywhere from uh, x equals 0 to x equals 100.2, uh, 100 essentially this region, we don't need any stirrups at all. So that's going to be a guiding principle for the focus of our design. Everybody okay with this? Now we're going to produce a few different designs and they're going to get more and more economical. The, the first design that we produce is going to be really, really basic, but I'm going to, it's, it's one of those walk before you can run type things. We're going to take our time with it and make sure everybody understands how this is done. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next panel and we can start doing some design. Okay. So we've already done step one and we've got our shear diagram taken care of. So step two, let's do a starting S value. Okay, starting S value. Okay, so what I'm, bless you, what I'm going to do is this. So just so everybody's clear and I'm not pulling equations from, from the sky here. Okay. Everybody remember this? Everybody remember this, that VVN has to be greater than or equal to VU, and then I know VN is VC plus VS. Well, all I'm doing is taking this equation and just solving for what S is. So if you see this equation just pop out of the sky, that's all this is, is just taking this equation and solving for S, because that's ultimately what I'm trying to figure out is how far apart to space these stirrups. So the equation I'm going to use is this. I'm going to say that S required is the following. It is phi times AV FYTD, move this out of the way, and then it's VU minus VVC. Now, for the VU, this is where I'm starting the design, and ACI permits you to start the design at the shear where X equals D. So my starting value is VU star, okay? So just want everybody to make sure they see that. Now, now let's just start plugging some values in, okay? So what is phi for shear? 0.75, it's always 0 0.75 for shear. Okay, what is AV? Let's see if everybody remembers that. 0 0.22 square inches. Okay, FY is 60 KSI. That T does not look like a subscript. That's going to bug me. Everybody's going to like, what's T? It's not, it's a subscript. There we go. All right. And then what was D? 
20, was it 24 or 25 inches? 25. Okay. Now, VU star, what was VU star? And then, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of VC, just, we calculated phi VC. What was phi VC? Thirty-seven point ninety-five kips. Has everybody got that? Okay. So let's plug chug. Tell me what you get. Four. I heard four point six six. Is there a second on that? Okay. Four point six six. What? Inches. Yeah. This is a stirrup spacing. Now. So everybody okay on this? Now let's use some common sense here. Are you going to go to a contractor or somebody tying rebar and say, I want you to space these rebar out at 4.66 inches? <laughs> no. What should I do? Okay, everybody, this conversation here is exactly right. You round it down. You don't round it up, okay? Think about what we're talking about here. What is this S value? It's how far apart the stirrups are spaced. If you round that up, the stirrups get farther apart. If they get farther apart, what happens to your capacity? It goes down. So the conservative approach is to take that number and round it down. More stirrups. Now, we could probably go with something like four and a half, but I want to keep my math simple and keep everything straightforward. I'm going to say for our purposes, let's use S equals four inches. Okay. I, I would just keep it a whole number. I would keep it straight. Because you're going to see how we optimize this here in a second. And, and we'll be, I'll be able to discuss this a little more intelligently here in a second once we've got a little bit more done. But the overall economy in a design is the number of stirrups. Like, let me, let me say it like this. If you can space, let's say you need 20 stirrups. If you can space 20 stirrups at 4 inches or 20 stirrups at 4.25 inches, it doesn't matter from an economy standpoint because it's still the same number of stirrups. So why not keep it simple and just use four inches? Do you see what I mean? That, that'll be a, a, a simple way of answering that question, but it'll get a little more involved when we start using different stirrup increments as our design gets refined. So, so far, so good, but we'll, we'll delve into that here in a little bit. Everybody good so far? Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to go ahead and produce design number one, okay? And let's be clear, this design would work. We could stop right now, but we're going to get better with it here in a second. Now, I am actually going to verbally write out what I'm going to do, and then we're going to produce the design. So this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to place my first stirrup at x equals 2 inches, okay? And that's common. It, it, whenever you're doing stirrup design, it's, you, it's usually quite common to place your first stirrup at half that increment. So if you're using 6 inch spacing, put your first stirrup at 3 inches in case you need to put any on the other end of the support, okay? Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use 4 inch spacing until x equals what? I'm just curious. 100.2. Now this is a very rudimentary design because we're not employing, we're not even recognizing the fact with this design that there's portions of the beam that don't need all this, this heavy stirrup usage. We can use S max in some of those center regions or some of those regions closer to the center. But we're just walking before we can run. Okay? So let me here here's how I'm gonna write this. Okay? And and don't write anything down just yet. Just, just sort of watch me. Okay? Now I'm gonna place my first stirrup at two inches. Okay? So that's that's two inches. So if you want a picture, if you want an actual picture of what, what the beam looks like. Watch this. Okay, so here's the beam. Okay. And let's say here's my support. Okay. Okay, so let's say there's the support. 
So my first stirrup, let's say I'm putting that right here, my first stirrup is two inches away, okay? Then I'm going to use four inch spacing, four inch spacing, four inch spacing, okay? So let's say, okay, so that's four inches, that's four inches, that's four inches. Let's say that I did this like what you see right here on this image, let's say that this was my layout. So what I would do is I'd say one at two inches, then I'd say three at four inches, okay? So that would be three times four, that'd be 12 inches. So in total, that would be four stirrups, and that would be 14 inches. Is everybody seeing how I'm doing that? So... I'm adding up those increments, so one, two, three, four, that's how I'm getting the four, and then the two, and that gives me 14. Now, obviously, this isn't enough, right? Because that's only 14 inches. I've got to go all the way to 100.2. So let me ask you a question. What does this number right here have to be in order for this design to be appropriate? Is 10 enough? Is 20 enough? What's that number got to be? You're saying 25. Okay, so if I have 25 at 4 inches, that's going to be 100 inches, right? 25 times 4. Everybody with me on that? So what that would mean is 26 stirrups for a total distance of 100.2 inches. Or 100, sorry, not 100.2, 102. Is everybody okay with that? Could I use 24 here? What, what would happen if I used 24? What would that value be? 96, right? And 96 plus 2 is 98. It's not enough, right? I got to use 25 to cross that value. I got to place stirrups up until x equals 100.2. So I got to, it's, it's like I got to go a little past that based on my increments. Does that make sense? Everybody with me on that? Okay. Now, let's see if you're paying attention. How many stirrups am I putting in the beam total? 52. Who said that? Right, right there. Why'd you say 52? Exactly. That's only on one end of the beam. So this design would be 52 stirrups total. Okay? So this would be 52 stirrups total. Now, that's 52 stirrups. I think we can do better, okay? I think we can cut down the number of stirrups quite easily, okay? One of the easiest ways that we can cut down the number of stirrups is to use S max, okay? Let's look at S max. You're exactly right. And, and that's something we have to address here in a second. And I, I think you're going to like how we handle that here in a second. Just bear with me. So what we're going, so, so what she was asking is we can only use max, S max in that given range. That's true, but we can possibly stretch it a little bit into the region where we need stirrups. The way we're going to go about this, though, is quite general, and I think you'll see how this works. So... We know for a fact that we're going to be able to economize our design by using S max. So let's figure out what the heck the maximum S value even is. Let's figure out what that even is. Now, we have two different S maxes that we need to investigate. Okay? So, because there's two different provisions, bless you, that we have to. Uh, that we have to meet according to, um, uh, according to ACI. So the first one says, uh, is based on our, uh, uh, is looking at just maximum stirrup spacing in general. So we have one that's based on maximum stirrup spacing, one that's based on minimum shear requirement, or minimum resistance requirement. So we're going to sort of rearrange them and use them both, bless you. So this first one, I'm going to take a guess and say that this one governs so I'm going to look at this. So S max is the, 
minimum of D over 2 or 24 inches. Let's go ahead and just compute that. We'll call that S max 1. So S max 1 is the minimum of D over 2 or 24 inches, which is the minimum of, what was D again, 25? 25 inches over 2 or 24 inches, and that's going to be 12 and a half, right? So far so good? All right. Now that's S max 1. S max 2, this one's looking not so much at a maximum uh, start spacing, but more of a minimum reinforcement requirement. But I'm just going to rearrange the equation to solve for another limit on S max, because it's basically going to be the same thing. So our second limit on spacing is AV uh, times FY divided by B times the maximum of these two values. So in order to compute this, I'm going to go up to the side. I'm going to compute 0.75 square root of FC prime. So let, let's see what that is. Um, let's go back to this. So let's go over here. 0 0.75 square root of FC prime is 0 0.75 times the square root of, what was it for this problem, Three or 4,000? 4,000. 4, and 4,000, right? And that comes out to be what? 47.43 PSI. So our equation says we use the maximum of either that or 50. So just use the 50. So therefore, S max 2 is AV FYT over BW times 50 PSI. Does everybody see how I'm doing that? Because it's the maximum of either 50 or this, which we count, it's 50. So AV is 0 0.22, in, what, inches squared? Right? This is 60 KSI. This is 16 inches. This is 50 PSI. Thank you. I want to see if anybody caught that. I know it's Friday, but I wanted to see if anybody caught that. This is PSI, so this has to be PSI. That's why you write those units out. Write that little P, the little S, the little I. Don't just put a 60 and a 50. You're going to get some weird designs. So what does this come out to be? 16.5 inches. So, yes. This, it, it's a subscript, sorry. This isn't dynamics. That's not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> He said this is time, but we don't talk about that in here. Everybody's like, hey, we need to cut that out. Uh, okay, all right. L let, me, dude, chop. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Of these, which one governs? Like, which one's going to control which one we pick? Are we going to go with the 12 and a half or the 6 and a half? The 12 and a half. Okay, now, let me ask you this. Practicality and for simplicity, what should we use? 12 inches. Okay, so let's use S equals 12 inches. So, that's S max. That's going to be the maximum space. So, one of the things that this tells us about our design is whatever we decide to do from here on out, whatever spacings we use, we know they're going to be somewhere between four inches and 12 inches, right? So to keep this simple and to keep this in even multiples, like think about this from a geometry standpoint. It'd be weird. It might be kind of strange. I mean, you could probably make it work, but it might be kind of strange to think, okay, we got four inches and maybe we use seven inches and then 12 inches. Like I, I, my, my mind, I'd want to keep it simple, like four, six, eight, ten, you know, something easy.
Okay. Just, just food for thought. Okay. Everybody good? Now, y yes. That, that's a good question. The question is, why wouldn't you use several different elements? It would just depend on what we were talking about. I mean, if we're looking at a building design problem and we're using the same beam like 800 times in a given building, there's something to be said about trying to keep your design kind of simple, you know, because it's going to have to be done over and over and over and over again. Um, I'm not saying, like, sacrifice simplicity for economy. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying have, a, have some common sense about, about what you're laying out. Whereas if it's a bridge, and there's only like five beams for the whole bridge, I mean, tailor that thing as much as you can for the load demand. Does, does that make sense? I, exactly. Or, and, and it's not even just regions. There might be different products. They might use welded wire fabric for shear reinforcement. There, there's other options. So, I'm, but you also have to understand that the, just per beam, the sheer load on a bridge beam is way higher than on a building beam. It's it's not even the same story. So, well, whether it's precast or not, it, I, I'm what I'm saying is it's a function of the number of elements you're producing. If you're producing a thousand precast elements versus five precast elements, there's something to be said about just streamlining the process. You know, I'm thinking you know the assembly line. Type type delivery. Does that does that make sense? It so it, it would kind of be the same same philosophy. Everybody good here? Now we've got this S value of 12 inches, but we really don't know where we can start using it. Okay. Well, uh, now you make a good point because you're saying like, yeah, we do. We can use that. Now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He he's he's making a really good point here because what he's saying is we can just use that in that center region or that that middle region. I propose we might even be able to dip into region one a little bit. Let me show you how I'm going to assess that. I've, I've got a little bit of a general way uh, of attacking that. Can I, can I move on to the next panel? Watch, watch this. So just bear with me. They're long. I can't help it. Three. All right, all right. What I'm going to do, here's what I'm going to do. For step four, I'm going to determine the range for S equals 12. So here's what I'm going to do. And once you get to this step four, it's going to be pretty repetitive, and, and you'll see why. So VS is A, V, F, now hold on, there we go. Well, yeah, but we can use S max, that's fine. It, it, it doesn't really matter for, for, for our purposes, because you're going to see here in a second how I'm going to, how I'm going to do this, so if you want me to put S max, I can. Okay, all right, so that is 0 0.22 inches squared times 60 KSI times 25 inches over 12 inches. What does that come out to be? Twenty-seven and a half what? Kips. Okay. Now I'm going to take this value and I'm going to compute phi V N. Okay. So that's phi V C plus phi V S. So what is phi V C? Thirty-seven point ninety-five kips. That's constant, right? Because Regardless of what our stirrup spacing is, that's still the, the capacity provided by the concrete. And what do I do for PVS? 0 0.75 times 27.5 kips. 
Everybody okay with that? Okay. What do we got? Fifty-eight point five eight. Well, uh, okay. I'm gonna go with five eight. I almost wanted to put point six and just drop the mic on both of you. Okay. N now what I'm gonna do? So here, here's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna do this. Now before I start computing anything, does everybody here see what I'm doing? Okay. First off, see this equation right here? I'm going to give everybody a sec to write this down before we start computing everything. See this equation? It's coming from here. Okay. Remember what these two equations would do. This is shear as a function of x. But this equation will say, for a given value of shear, where is that occurring on the beam? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out, here's my shear diagram, right? So here's my shear diagram. What, would, what did phi be in? What did we just get? 58.6? So at x equals 25, it's like 91. At x equals 30, it's like 37. So we're about what? Somewhere right here? So what is that value is what I'm trying to figure out. What I'm saying is that I can probably use that 12-inch spacing all through here and probably even a little bit in here somewhere up until wherever that 58 kip shows up. I don't know where it is. We're, we're going to see. Now, did, did that make sense? Everybody okay with that? So we've got 115 kips minus 58.6. Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. It's it's because it's Friday. Nobody saw the joke. 11.5 kips per foot. What's the value that you're getting? There you go, feet. So 4.91 feet. Do I have a second on that? And, and in inches, what is that in inches? 58.87. 58.9. 58 No, no, no. This one I'd round up because I'd want to use that spacing farther. It, uh, it, but I'll say this. Because, be, this, this is a good point. Because we're using these like even increments of stirrup spacing, like 4 inches and 12 inches, this isn't as super sensitive on rounding as some things. Like, when we calculated rows for reinforcement ratios, I mean, you need to carry that out a few decimal places to get some accuracy. This isn't as sensitive to stuff like that, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but is everybody okay with this? Okay. Now, if you, if you, yeah. The no, just the nominal capacity. No, it's just VC plus VS, so. Everybody okay with this? Why is superseding the R ratio reasonable? You said we, you know, we might get a dead baby, but why is it? Because it's really just because of the physics of it. If you use 12 inch spacing, based on these beam dimensions, you'll get a capacity of 58.6 kips. You believe that? For 58.58 kips. You can use that spacing, that 58.58 kips, starting about right here, because that's what that value is on the shear diagram. So that's why I was saying you can use it here. That would be a really simplistic way of going about it. But you can save some stirrups by recognizing you can start that right here. Th does that make sense? Yeah. That's a good question. Is everybody else okay with that? Okay. All right. So now, now our design philosophy or our design procedure is going to get a little more intricate. Okay. Now I'm going to do what I did last time, and I'm going to write this out, write it out verbally, because I think that that helps everybody understand what I'm doing. Okay, so I want everybody to pay attention to this. So 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my first stirrup at x equals 2 inches. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to use 4 inch spacing until x equals what? The 58.9 inches because once I cross that 58.9 I can then start using 12 inch spacing until x equals what? 100.2, that's the number I wanted you to keep in the back of your head. All right, now, let's see if we can do some mental math in our heads, okay? Now, all right, so my first stirrup at two inches, that's two inches, okay? Now, that is x equals 2. Like, we start at x equals 0, we use that many increments, that'll get me to x equals 2. Okay? Just bear with me. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use 4 inch spacing. Now, how many, four inch, how many 4 inch increments do I need? Like, if I used 10, I'd have 10 times 4, which is 40, and that would get me to 42, right? That's not enough. How many do we need? You say 15. Watch this. So 15 at 4 is 60 inches. So after that, that puts me at x equals 62. Everybody okay with that? What if I use 14? What would that put me at? If I use 14, this would be 14 at 4. That would be 56. That would put me at 58. That's not far enough. Does everybody see that? Everybody okay with that? Okay, now. Now... Let's use 12 inch, okay? So th this is where you got to pay attention. This is why I wanted to walk before we can run, okay? So 12 inches. So how many 12 inch increments do I need? Let's see if anybody can figure that out. I'm at x equals 62. Four, okay? He says four. So four at 12 inches puts me at 48 inches. So 62 plus 48 is what? 110. What if I used one less? That would put me at like what? 98 or something? That's not enough, right? Got to use one more. Is everybody seeing how I'm doing this? Okay. Now let's add this up. Let's add this up. Okay. Let's add this up. How many stirrups is that? That's 15, 14, 9. That's 20 stirrups for, what, 110 inches? So how many stirrups total? 40 stirrups. How did we do compared to our last design? What did we get for our last design? 52. So we, by just using another increment, we dropped our number of stirrups down quite a bit. Now that might not seem like a lot if, if you know, it's just, I mean, we're only talking about number three rebar. I mean, have you ever seen, I mean, number three rebar is only about like that. It's really tiny. And you're only talking about a hoop around a beam. So what? You say a few of these. Imagine if this beam's getting used in a building 800 times. That's a lot of steel, you know? That's, that's a big deal, okay? But if you can shave some weight, do it, okay? Make sense? So all we had to use is another increment, and we, did, we didn't do too bad. What do you think? Not too bad, right? No, I, I want to I wanna show you something. We, we're not quite done because I want to show you something. Hold on, hold on. Say that again. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. Usually when we design, we end up having stirrups go into the area that we don't 
That's a good question. The question was, um, when we design, will we have stirrups going into that region where they're not needed? The answer is just because of our increments and just, it's like your times tables back in third grade. You're, you're, exa you're exactly right. If we, okay, so take one of them off at 12 inches and that puts you at what? What's that minus 12? 98. So you need one more just to cross that threshold. So you're always going to dip in a little bit just based off of, it's like your times tables back in what, third grade or fourth grade. It's going to dip over a little bit. So. Well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me answer your, both your questions at the same time. It really wouldn't matter as long as you weren't getting you know, too close together, but let's, let's also talk about economy. Are you really reducing the total number of stirrups with your answer? It's still 40 stirrups, so whether you space them at 12 inches or 4 inches doesn't really matter. You see what I mean? So you also have to look at it from an overall economy perspective. Are you really saving dollars? And you really aren't, you know? So it, th th these are good questions to ask. Should be less labor if you just kept it at that because you think a labor worker is going to cut a piece of wood and jack up that blade there, or something. The, the, the last one, if it's two inches, they got other issues to deal with. Exactly. If you're, if you're the person tying rebar, Keep it simple, you know. Keep keep your dimensions and your increments as simple as possible, you know. Don't make it too complicated, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Step six. <laughs> Additional. All right, all right. I, we're going to stop after after step six, but I, I do want everybody to pay attention to this because this is kind of important, okay? So. Is everybody in agreement that the, the stirrup spacing, based on what we've done so far, it's got to be between 4 inches and 12 inches, right? 4 inches was the spacing we picked based off the highest shear in the whole beam, and 12 inches is our maximum. So if we wanted to try and throw another increment of stirrup spacing, we probably need to try like 6 inches, and then 8 inches, or 10 inches, or 12 inches something like that, right? I, I want to show you something. This is it. There is a step seven, but it's quick. Oh goodness! I know, but I want I needed. I needed to take time with it. I needed to take time. Okay, everybody pay attention. Everybody pay attention. So let me show you something. Let's just. Pick a value in between, six inches, okay? Now, I'm going to skip some values in between, but could you all take that value of six inches and compute a VS? Like, we don't need to right now, but could you do that? A, V, F, Y, D over S? And then could you take that and compute a V, V, N? V, V, S plus V, V, C? And then you could take that and compute an X, right? X where that happens. I'll go ahead and tell you, when you do this for six inches, you get 37.4 inches right here. If you don't believe me, this is where you need to go through and do that. If you do eight inches, this ends up being, I think, 48.1. Okay? Ten inches ends up being... Uh, 54.6, and if you do 12, you know, you get the 58.9. So is everybody okay with that, like where I'm coming up with these numbers? So I'm saying, like, go up here, go up here to, the, to this step. If you have an S value of 12 inches, take that plug it into here to get VX, plug it into here to get VVN, plug it into here to get X. I'm saying if you just picked a different value, just keep going through and chugging that out. Fair. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Did you have a question? No. Oh. Okay. Here, here's the point. You're wondering, like, why make it complicated? I want everybody to watch what I'm going to do here. Watch this. I'm going to use, I'm going to show you another design using this value. 
I'm going to put one stirrup at two inches for two inches. Then what I'm going to do is this. Okay, so that's x equals two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put nine stirrups at four inches, so that's 36. Why am I doing that? What's my x value? 38. Now I can start using six inch spacing. And I'm going to use six inch spacing, I'm going to use four of them, so that'll give me 24 inches, and that'll be x equals 62. Why is that important? Because once I cross 62, I can start using 12 inches. And so I'll end up using 4 here, that's 48 inches, and that's x equals 110. What did I get for throwing that additional increment in? Did that make sense? Kind of. That's, that's a way of looking at it, but it's just you're giving your design a little more freedom. Okay. No more calculations. I want to show you something on the homework assignment. No, I'm not showing you the answer. Nice try, but no. All right, all right, all right. Look, for both of the design problems, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you this so that we all arrive at the same answer. I'm telling you, begin the first stirrup two inches away from the support like we've done in class, and I only want you to use two increments, at most, two increments of stirrup spacing for these uh, problems. The stirrup spacing at VU star, and then maximum. So, sort of what we did here. I'm doing that so that everybody arrives at the same answer on the homework assignment. If you wanted to throw another stirrup increment spacing in there, you could. Everybody get different answers. So, does that make sense? Everybody okay with this? In all honesty, you ought to, before everybody leaves, you ought to give this homework assignment a shot. Like, take a look at it over the weekend. So, come Monday, you can have, if you have questions, you can ask them. On Monday, we will start looking at concentrated loads. How do you do shear design for that? That's all I got.